Hi, I'm Lori Friedel. I'm an Associate Professor of Criminology at the University of South Florida. Now, what the modern science of bias tells us is two important things. One, that there's a difference between explicit and implicit bias. And second, that bias has changed over time. Regarding the first, explicit bias is generally what we think about when we think about someone with bias and prejudice. This is a person who links groups to negative stereotypes. It's based on animus and hostility. These stereotype associations impact on that person's perceptions and behavior, producing discriminatory behavior. But a person with explicit bias knows it, owns it, and will tell you about it. They'll tell you, I don't like this group because of A, B, C, and D. Implicit bias shares some characteristics with explicit bias. We link people to stereotypes associated with their groups. It impacts on our perceptions and on our behavior, producing discriminatory behavior. But there are some important differences. Those linkages are not based on animus and hostility. This can impact a person outside of conscious awareness, and it occurs even in people who at the conscious level reject biases and stereotypes. The second thing that we learn from the social psychologists is that bias has changed over time. In our grandparents' time, it was more likely to be explicit bias that manifested in individuals. And in modern humans, it's more likely to be implicit bias. So even well-meaning individuals have implicit biases that can impact on their perceptions and on their behavior. To have an implicit bias means we link a person, we put them in a group, and we link them to a particular characteristic or stereotype. That might be based on the person's gender, body shape, race, and so forth. That characteristic might be how disciplined they are, how smart they are, how well they drive. A really important example of an implicit bias, one that's related to policing, is the race-crime implicit bias. Specifically, modern humans link African Americans to crime, violence, and aggression. One example is a study by Josh Carell that showed the existence of the black crime implicit bias. Subjects sat in front of a computer monitor and pictures of men popped up and they either had a gun in their hand or a neutral object like a Coke bottle. And these men were either black or white. And the subjects were told, hit the shoot key if this person is a threat, and hit the don't shoot key if they're not a threat. And of course, Josh Carell wanted to see if in fact the race of the person impacted on the subject's perceptions of threat when told to move through the photos very quickly. And sure enough, Josh confirmed a black crime implicit bias. Subjects were more likely to shoot the unarmed black, more likely than they were to shoot the unarmed white. Now, the implications of this black crime implicit bias was highlighted in a recent study of the Philadelphia Police Department and their use of force. The researchers looked at what's called threat perception failure. And that's a situation where the officers make a mistake of fact. They think that a person is armed, maybe even reasonably believe that, but the person turns out not to be armed. And what the researchers found is that this was much more likely to occur when the subject was an African American. This is absolutely consistent with the race crime implicit bias. What's also important about their findings is that this was true regardless of the race of the officer. Whether the officer was white, black, or Hispanic, they were more likely to perceive a threat on the part of an African American subject. Implicit biases aren't just about race, and if we think about implicit biases and how they might impact on police, that could include gender, um, race, it could include body shape and so forth. It could include income. So maybe it's an officer assuming that the person with the BMW and the tie is the one telling the truth at a crash scene over the person with a beat up truck and maybe who is a Hispanic. Now, one thing that's important to remember is that stereotypes are based in part on fact. And that's true even of the black crime implicit bias. It is true in our society that lower income people are disproportionately represented 
amongst the people who commit street crime. In our society, African Americans are disproportionately represented in low-income segments. And so that's how criminologists have come to understand why it is that African Americans are disproportionately represented amongst the people who commit street crimes. And so that, in part, is why we have a stereotype linking African Americans to crime and violence. But even if there is some fact associated with those stereotypes, police cannot do their policing based on stereotypes. We err as police, we err in any profession when we treat the individual as if they reflect the stereotype. Because in fact, policing based on stereotypes can be ineffective, unsafe, and unjust. The Fair and Impartial Policing Program is a training program for police that has been funded in large part by the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services. From the funds from the COPS office, we have developed five curriculums for various subsets of the agencies. For all of these subsets, whether it's patrol officers or first-line supervisors, we teach them about the science of bias so that they can start to recognize their own implicit biases. We also teach them how they can reduce their biases and how they can manage their biases and ultimately how they can police in a fair and impartial policing manner. Agencies all over the United States, as well as some in Canada, are now receiving this training. In fact, the demand for this training started to increase in late 2013, early 2014. And now, as a result of the incidents in Ferguson and beyond, there is a great demand for fair and impartial policing training. And in fact, the President's Task Force on 21st Century Policing recently suggested that all agencies train all their per personnel in the science of implicit bias. When my trainers and I walk into a room of police, 30 is the maximum, generally we're facing a group that is somewhere between defensive and hostile. This comes from how we've talked about this issue in this country. We've basically treated police as if they're racist and told them to stop being prejudiced. So they come into the room not wanting to be there. But then we start talking to them about the science about how all humans have biases and what they can do to be the fair and impartial police officers they want to be.